You know, I knew ever since release this card was busted. It just took the GOAT, like Joshua Schmidt, to make it good. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery of our 32 here, and destroy the ever-living witch's strike boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1400 ladder. Also, I wanted to address this very quickly um, because I've seen some people asking about it and I've been trying to figure it out myself. Um, I do use a Blue Yeti microphone, but for some reason, whenever I use the Windows Game Bar to record my screen, I think it's picking up my webcam mic, which is why I sound like I'm inside of a toaster. So I do apologize about that. Um, if you watch like any of my videos where I'm using my webcam, obviously the sound sounds much better from my Blue Yeti. I've tried to mess around with my sound settings and I can't get it to come through my Blue Yeti. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. So I do apologize if my sound or if my voice sounds very weird. Anyways, we got to talk about the Joshua Schmidt German Open Special. At first, I wasn't going to talk about this. Like, I was watching his deck profile, and I'm like, look, I'll I'll copy this, I'll net deck it, I'll see how it functions, but, like, it's Joshua Schmidt. Like, Joshua Schmidt can make anything look good, right? Like, I figured, because he's so good of a player, he could take, like, a Beaver Warrior OTK deck and put a spin on it and make it look like the next Tier 0 deck all, all over God's Green Earth. But no, I mean, it's just the fact that he applied concepts that no one's really thinking about, and it rewarded him. Uh, and again, it, it, people didn't know what this deck did. No one knew what Paleo cards did, which I think is hilarious. Um, and of course, people aren't going to know what Accumulated Fortune does, unless you're my dad who played Chainburn for over a decade, which we're going to talk about this card because there was something that Joshua Schmidt didn't mention that I'm assuming he knows, or if he just didn't feel like mentioning it. Um... But yeah, there, there's something actually kind of funny with this card that we're going to talk about. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about this because this deck is absolutely just hilarious. Like, we're playing fucking Rise to Full Height in Wabaku in 2024. Like, this this is just hilarious to me. Um, if you haven't seen his deck profile, I highly recommend you go watch it. I mean, it's Joshua Schmidt. This this man's the GOAT. Just the, one of the GOATs, the greatest of all time. Like, you, you need to go watch that man. Anyway, I'm going to stop sucking him off. And uh, pause. We're going to talk about his deck. So he went 6-1-2. Um, six, six wins, one draw, two losses at the German Open, which is basically just a glorified regional from what I understand from my European viewers. Shout out to all y'all in Europe. And uh, he took 54 card because we don't have that grass looks greener, aka that ass looks thicker in the TCG. And he's been playing a bunch of Master Duel, aka Master Shits. I still think that that game's garbage. I don't care what anyone says. And if you're a veteran watcher on the channel, you know how we feel about that game. Um, but that doesn't mean he's a bad player. He definitely knows what he's talking about. He's won many things. I mean, his resume is there. Uh, I don't have to talk about that. Let's go ahead and talk about his deck. Um, so for the monsters, he's playing three back jacket on Ipira. That's literally it because you can go gigantic sprite, get Ipira to draw a card, and then you can make like a little knight. It's, it's really funny. Uh, next up, we're playing three copies of time carrying Morgan Knight because it lets you draw two cards, uh, three desires, and then three, uh, Trap Tantalizing Tune. So, ignore the stuff about the Insect and Plant. It's literally just discard a normal trap, draw two. You can banish this card from your graveyard, target one of your banished level four insect or plant monsters, or normal traps. Place it on the bottom of the deck. So, you banish a transaction rollback. You can put it on the bottom of your deck, which is hilarious. Uh, one Reasoning and one card of Demise, because Reasoning is only at one. And then for the uh, Paleos, we're playing uh, three Leonchula. I'm going to butcher these. Leonchula, three Rollback, three Wabaku, three Rise to Full Height, three Dharma Cannon. 3 Paleozoic Olenitis, 3 Dynamiscus, 3 Fiend Griefing, 3 Morelia, 3 Trap Trick, 3 Needle Bug Nest. I haven't seen this since Dragon Ruler format. It mills 5, that's all you need to know. Um, and then we're playing 3 of the Paleozoic Canadia, and then 3 Accumulated Fortune. So, here's what's really funny about Accumulated Fortune. It's played in Chain Burn back in the day, because obviously it's a chain card. Actually, only as a Chain Link 4 higher draw 2 cards. You cannot activate this card if multiple cards effects with the same name are in that chain. Here's something really cool with Accumulated, um, and I've seen this debate for years, and I've seen so many judges get this wrong. You can chain Accumulated to Accumulated. Now, you're probably thinking, Avery, you, you can't activate cards in the same chain. When you activate that first Accumulated Fortune, and you're on a chain link four or higher, right, and there's no cards with the same name in the same chain, you haven't activated that second Accumulated. Once you've now activated that second Accumulated, You've now activated a card in the same chain, but you can still activate it because 
up until that point, you've only activated one accumulated. So now by activating the second one, you now have a card with the same name and the same chain, but you've already met its activation condition. So it bypasses it in a sense. Now, does that mean you could chain a third accumulate? No, because you've got two accumulated fortunes in the same chain. So keep that in mind. If you want to draw four fucking cards on a chain link four or higher, just activate the accumulated chain accumulated, draw four cards. When my dad used to play chamber back in the day when it was actually good, people would argue about this left and right, and he would call a judge over and the judge would say, yep, uh, this bypasses it because you can activate it. And now once it's met its activation condition and you play it, now you've hit two cards with the same name and the same chain, but you haven't hit that point till you actually activate the card. Therefore, you can activate accumulated to accumulate it. I hope that explanation makes sense. It's absolutely disgusting. As far as I know, that ruling's never been changed. So, yeah, if you want to draw four cards, go ahead and do that. Um, for the extra deck, we're playing two Zeus, one Sky Crisis, one Downer Magician, two Amulcaris, however you pronounce that, one Toad, one Sky Calvary, one Gigantic Sprite, three Opabina, one Little Knight, one Paleozoic Kimbroster, and then one Link Karibo. So something cool that Josh mentioned with uh, Little Knight is Rise to Full Height. So you target one face-up monster on the field, double its defense, but its defense becomes zero at the end of this turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one monster you control. Your opponent's monsters cannot attack for the rest of this turn, except to attack that monster. You can only activate one rise per turn. So, you can dump this off of, you know, whether it's Morelia, because this is just a foolish barrel of goods for traps, um, or if you dump it off of Reasoning, Needle Bug Nest, whatever the case may be. If you make, say, a Little Knight, right, and you've got, say, Rise set, and the opponent activates, I don't know, a monster effect, they activate Baron or something, I don't know, they're, they're trying to get rid of your Little Knight. You chain the Little Knight, targeting itself and the opponent's monster to banish. You chain the Rise, uh, what is this thing called? Rise to full height. You banish it from your grave on the next chain. Target the Little Knight. The chain resolves. The Little Knight's banished. You banish one of the opponent's monsters. Now the opponent can't attack. Because the only thing that they were able to attack is the Little Knight. The Little Knight's now banished. I mean, who thinks of these things? <laughs> Um, this is just hilarious. Now, he did mention how you can easily just beat this deck by chain blocking, because keep in mind, all of the Paleozoic monsters say, um, when a trap card is activated while this card's in your graveyard, obviously none of them are once per turn, so if you have multiple copies in the grave, you can activate multiples and whatever, but... Uh, all you have to do is just chain another card. So, if you're playing this deck and you activate Wabaku, and the opponent chains, I don't know, a, name any card, uh, they chain their own Fiend Griefing. Well, now, uh, they can't chain, well, that's actually a bad example, because it says when a trap card is activated. So, they activate Wabaku, they chain DD Crow. Well, now, they can't activate any of their Paleo Monsters, because now you've just chain blocked them by activating uh, another card that wasn't a trap card. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Like an example he gave was that a branded player had Mud Dragon and Pale um, Predator Plant Dragos Capella up, and he activated a trap, and all the opponent had to do was just chain either Mud Dragon or Dragos Capella, and then it would have chain blocked the Paleo. So that's something to keep in mind. All these are when effects, which kind of makes them a bit wonky at times. So uh, moving on to the side deck, we're playing a three Volcanic Scatter Shot with the Blaze Accelerated Reload for time because he said that this deck is slow. Um, two Zombie World, two Different Dimension Ground, two D-Barrier, two Metaverse, and three fucking Witches Strike. This card's absolutely insane. I knew it was just a matter of time until it would be busted. Um, someone was going to break this this card, and uh, I, I would say it now officially has. It says, if your opponent negates the normal or special summon of a monster or monsters, or the activation of a card or effect, destroy all cards your opponent controls and in their hand. So, the example he gave was like with Voiceless Voice, you... Um, bait out the Skull Guardian negate, and you chain, like, say, a Morelia to dump Transaction Rollback or Witch's Strike, as long as you have both in the grave. When the chain resolves, one of your cards was negated, you can chain the Transaction Rollback in Grave, banish it, copy the Witch's Strike because one of your cards got negated, and now you can use the Witch's Strike's effect to just blow away their board and win the ball game. I bought a play set of these like a few years ago, and I'm predicting that they're going to go up because it's the Joshua Schmidt effect, or really any pro player effect at this point, uh, making this card good. Um, th this card's absolutely insane, and it just took us getting transaction rollback to see that be the case. Now, do do I think that like every deck is that can play transaction rollback is going to play Witch's Strike? I don't think so, because you have to keep in mind, unless you're like going to be playing Foolish Barrel Goods in your main deck or something. He's also playing three Morelia, which just dumps a trap from deck to grave. Um, so 
since they're not once per turn, if you have multiples, you can use one to dump the rollback and then dump the witch's strike, things like that. Um, and then it, because we're playing trap trick, you can play a lot of two of, similar to what we saw Jeremy Mitchell doing um, with his side deck for nationals when he was playing a cash tier. He's playing a bunch of two ofs, you know, two D barriers, three trap trick. It gives you an extra copy of, of all of them. So essentially this 15 card side becomes what, like close to 20. So um, just a very interesting theory in that regard. Um, but I'm just speechless because like th this deck is hilarious. Now, does this deck die to like D shifter? Yeah. If people know how to play against this and like they're chain blocking your paleos, yeah, like someone's just going to drop their pants and put a dookie all over your board and like you're not going to win the ball game. Um, but I mean, this is how I got 10th place with Centurion because no one knew what my shit did. They just knew about King Calamity. They didn't know that like I could do a final Sigma or have a Legadia up on the board and with like a bunch of hand traps. Like that surprise factor where you can just pants people can win you games. I mean, it's, it's not that difficult to pull off, um, in the sense of like, you know, especially in being in a tier zero format. Um, yeah, this, this is... This is Paleo in 2024, and it's going to be interesting to see if any more people mess around with this deck or even just Paleo cards in general. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I love seeing creativity like this. Um, congrats to Joshua Schmidt going 6-1-2. and two. Uh, I'm definitely going to be playing this uh, and messing around with this and be trolling some people with Witches Strike. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.